Today we're going to be talking about Earth's landforms. Here are the biggest land masses on the entire Earth. The, la the largest land masses is the ocean and the seven continents. On each continent, there is at least one of these major landforms that we're going to be talking right now. These major landforms are mountains, hills, plateaus, and plains. This would be a plain, this would be plateau, mountains, and then hills. Now we will be going in detail of each of these major landforms. Let's first start off with mountains. Mountains are huge structures that that range between 200 to 15,000 feet. For example, take the Himal Mount Everest. That's the tallest mountain in the world located in the Himalayan range. Mountains are formed when two tectonic plates, when they collide with each other, on the land above, the land starts to fold on top, therefore creating a mountain. Next are hills. Hills is basically a smaller version of mountains. Except this time, hills is much more smaller, less steep, and flat. Here is hills. As you can see, they are way smaller. These are mountains. These mountains are way bigger than the hills. Hills are formed the same way as mountains. Also, some places where you can find hills is the Seven Hills of Rome, located in Italy. Next, we're going to be talking about plains. Here's the plains diagram. Plains over here have a flat land. The reason why they're flat is because due to um, wind, water, and um, ice, lots of rocks and sediments start coming into the plains, making the, making the land very even. An example of plains would be um, plains are located in every single continent. Example, take the Great Plains in, in um, Australia. Also, um, in central USA, there's also huge plains over there. Also, plains are called different names in different continents. In North America, they're called prairies. South America, they're called pampas. In Europe and Asia, they're called as steppes. While in Australia, they're called as downs. Next, we'll be talking about plateaus. Plateaus is basically a high land with a flat peak. Now, the way these um, plateaus are created is by magma or lava. So magma from the Earth's mantle actually rises up, but instead of exploding like a volcano, it slowly starts to overlap each other. The lava slowly starts to overlap, therefore evening the surface and creating a plateau. Some plateaus you could find in the real world could be the Tibetan Plateau, located in southwestern China. Next is deserts. This would be a desert. Um, to classify a certain land a desert, it must have very little precipitation and very little plant life. Also, what the way deserts are formed is basically um, the, all of the sediments from different areas of the world, due to the force of wind, they all land in this one spot. And this spot is known as a desert. Some places where you can find desert is from the equator to the Tropic of Cancer, or 15 degrees north to 30 degrees north. Or if you live in the Southern Hemisphere, equator to the Tropic of Capricorn, 15 degrees south to 30 degrees south. Some examples um, can be the Antarctic Desert. Even though it's a cold desert, it's also classified because it has very little precipitation and zero plant life. So um, the Antarctic Desert is one. Then there's the Sahara Desert located in Northern Africa. That's another. And then in Ch the border where Mongolia and China is, the Gobi Desert. That's also another. Next, we move on to glaciers. Glaciers are formed, this is a glacier. Glaciers are formed when um, huge chunks of ice are compact and compressed together. Here, um, glaciers are formed um, in the northern parts of the world or the southern parts in Antarctica. Now, a glacier moves but due to the force of gravity. It tries to move to the most steepest point until it eventually melts it down and then becomes ice. Now we'll go into the minor uh, landforms. Some minor landforms can be valleys, canyons, mesas, butties, and basins. First, let's talk about valleys. Now, valleys can be formed in two different ways. The first way is in a V-shaped form. The way it's formed in a V-shape is if water erodes the 
if water goes through and erodes the middle where two mountain ranges are. For example, this would be a valley over here because it is separating this mountain to this, from this mountain. So this would be a valley and it mostly forms into a V-shaped type. Another way is through glaciers. When glaciers go to the, to the steepest point, they move along with the mountains. And therefore, as moving down, it turns into a V, into a U shape, creating a similar type, but a U shape um, valley. Valleys are huge and important because number one, valleys hold a huge amount of water. And because of water, lots of crops and most plant life can grow there easily. Plus, more, more nutrients from where the water got from also can be landed in near valleys, so helping the crops grow even faster. This is why multiple great civilizations such as the Mesopotamian civilization and the Egyptian civilization was formed, all because of valleys. Next is a canyon. A canyon is similar to a valley, however, it is much more narrow than a regular valley. A valley, a Vichy valley would be way wider. However, when it comes to a canyon, it is very narrow. So water doesn't really pass that easily. Some examples of, of canyons can be the Grand Canyon located in Arizona. Next is the Mesas. So Mesas is basically similar to a, a plateau, but it is the medium, it is medium size of a plateau. But it's formed basically the same way. Some examples where you can find a mesa would be where the four touching states meet. If you don't know, then it would be Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and Utah. Next is a batiz. A batiz is even smaller than a mesa and also a plateau. However, also so formed the same way. So all these three are basically formed the same way and have the same characteristics from each other. Next is a basin. A basin, what happens is that when tectonic plates move, um, basically at this one part in the middle of the land will get depressed, however the other part will start rising, therefore creating the middle of the basin to be depressed and sink underground while the top, the outer edge of it is high. And basins mostly look like a bowl. For example, take the Amazon River Basin, here it connects here, the water, there's water inside this basin, and it connects from this basin all the way to the Atlantic Ocean. Now, a delta is basically where um, a river from either a valley or just a regular river starts to connect with the ocean. A delta is the mouth of the river. This is where the river water starts splitting into different streams. So this huge river then split into two streams, which split into different other streams. The land between those streams is called delta. And after talking about these minor um, landforms, we will then move on to coastal landforms. First, we will, shall start off with a peninsula. A peninsula is a large amount of land that just cuts through um, the water. Now, examples you can take could be on the Indian Peninsula. India is a peninsula. And also, you could take Florida in the US. That is also a peninsula. To classify a thing as a peninsula, it must be surrounded by water on all three sides. Also, um, the way peninsulas can be formed is either through volcanoes by creating new land, or another way is through sediments that water carries along with, creating new land as well. Next is a cape. A cape is just also surrounded by three sides, but it's just a smaller version of a peninsula. It's basically formed the same way as a peninsula, by volcanoes or by sediments that the water carries along with them. Next is a beach. A beach is where the edge of the land meets the water. Example, take this. This is the water, this is the land. A beach is the border, it borders the land and water from touching each other. Then after beach is an isthmus. An isthmus is a narrow strip of land that connects two larger land masses. This would be an isthmus because it's connecting two larger land masses. Isthmus is um, created when the water waves change. So basically, water waves, they start crashing into the middle of the land. Once they start crashing into the middle of the land, they will, um, then there'll be beach on both sides. 
However, there will be in the middle a narrow strip where you can get from one landmass to the other. A real life example of this would be Panama. Panama um, connects North America to South America by land. Next is an island. An island is a small land that is surrounded by four sides. The largest island in the world is, a, is Greenland. However, even though Australia is way bigger than Greenland, Australia is not considered an island, it is considered a continent. Now, um, an island can be formed either due to, due to volcanic activity called hotspots. When magma starts coming out from the lithosphere, that magma is actually creating new land, and this new land is um, an island. The Hawaiian Islands got created due to a hotspot. Next is an archipelago. An archipelago is basically when multiple islands form due to one same hotspot. And again, Hawaii would be a great example of this. After talking about the coastal landforms, we will move on to impactful landforms. One is a crater. So when a meteor, when it comes from outside terrestrial bodies, from outer space, when it crashes inside, it all the sediments that used to be in this specific place all explode, therefore pushing the land um, wider. And then it will look more like a bowl shape. Uh, then there's a crater lake. It's created by a crater, but this time rain comes and fills the crater up with water. For example, take Crater Lake in Utah. That is one. Also, uh, this does not only happen in Earth too. It also happens in the moon. The moon gets constantly hit by multiple asteroids every single day. That's why you're able to see such craters on the moon. These are all the different types of landforms. First there are mountains, then hills, then after that plains, deserts, valleys, canyons, craters, crater lakes, mesas, plateaus, butties, basins, peninsula, beach, cape, island, isthmus, and archipelago. And also deltas.